The parliamentary year is already off to a rollicking start and with me now from Canberra is one of the independent MPs who keeps the government afloat, Tony Windsor. Uh, Tony Windsor, I want to start with your political future. There's endless speculation that you won't win your seat because of, of blowback you'll get for supporting the Gillard government. So let me ask you now that the election date is set, will you contest the election on the 14th of September? Yes, I intend to uh, contest it, Lee, uh, given uh, health and all those issues and family issues, of course. Uh, and I always remember Peter Andron, who intended uh, uh, to contest an election and uh, uh, he died before the election was held. So, uh, But given everything is OK, uh, I'll be having a go. Do you think that you're getting blowback in your seat because of your support for the Gillard government? Well, I haven't done any polling on that. I sense on the street that there's been a change of mood, you know, probably over the last 12 months. Uh, I think you know, people in the electorate have seen a lot of things happening within the electorate. I think uh, uh, they also appreciate uh, uh, the role that I've played in terms of the uh, hung parliament, in terms of policy issues, you know, issues you know, like the national broadband network, uh, some of the clean energy issues, which are starting to resonate in the electorate and a lot of country electorates uh, as we speak and I think uh, a lot more over the next six months will uh, uh, happen. You know, uh, the role I played with the Murray Darling, there's a whole range of regional initiatives that I've been involved in. Most of the feedback, and I think I've had 11 people in the electorate over the two years or a bit more, uh, actually have a go at me and that doesn't mean there's only 11 people disagree with the decision, quite obviously there's a, a lot more than that. But, uh, I'm comfortable with the democratic process and always have been and as, as an independent you can't hide behind the tree and particularly in a hung parliament uh, you've got to make decisions. I, no, I, don't, uh, I don't mind that uh, but if people decide that they want you know, some sort of party lackey uh, to uh, uh, go to an obscure corner when he's ordered to do so, well that's, uh, that's fine, they're, they're the decision makers uh, well, well, uh, and I'm sure they'll, they'll make up their own minds. When you're out and about in the electorate, I wonder what people say to you about Julia Gillard and Tony Abbott because we see that the opinion polls show that people don't really approve of either of the job that they're doing. I just wonder what you, you hear anecdotally about why people are so unhappy with their political leaders. Well a bit of what uh, you've said and I think in a sense uh, and I don't mean this disrespectfully to either of them, but I think uh, each of them have kept the other one in the game. And, uh, uh, you know, if Malcolm Turnbull was the leader of the Liberal Party, for instance, I think it would be all over Red Rover. Uh, but, uh, and the other way around, if Kevin Rudd were leader of the Labor Party? Uh, well, perhaps. I think you know, that's been tested a bit before. Perhaps. I don't know. But uh, to answer your question directly, I think... You know, a lot of people don't particularly have a high regard uh, for either the Prime Minister or the Opposition Leader. And, uh, and obviously that was probably the case at the last election too. And if you look at the primary votes, other than the one last week, the news poll uh, last week, or earlier this week, uh, the primary votes have been very similar to what they were in 2010. So. Uh, uh, it hasn't shifted all that much. Well, you're pretty connected at Parliament House. Do you think that Labor MPs are reconsidering the leadership of the Labor Party? Well, if they are, I'm, no one's telling me, and neither should they. Uh, I, I don't know the answer to that, and, I, and I'm not going to waste my time getting involved in it uh, too much. They'll make their decisions, uh, the major parties always do. Uh, I don't think they'd take any notice of me if I stuck my oar in anyway, and, uh, and neither should they. Would you continue to support uh, Labor if Kevin Rudd did resume the leadership? Well, I'd have to look at that if it actually happened. I, I think, um, you know, in all honesty, though, if that happened and the stability of the arrangements uh, started to melt, that uh, a change of leadership would probably mean a, an election earlier rather than later. I don't think, you know, we can, well, no one can guarantee the September 14th date anyway. That's a preferred option in a sense. Uh, those things can change quite dramatically and if there's a change of leader that would probably change again. So uh, they're, they're all the things that are in the melting pot. But in a hung parliament you can't, you can't rule anything out. That's the, the very nature of them. They're very finely tuned and uh, you know, if someone dies or leaves the building well uh, the whole numbers game changes. Both parties have announced policies without explaining how they'll be paid for. When do you think is the right time to release their costings? <clears throat> well, when the right time and when they'll do it, they'll probably do it after the writs are issued. I think that's the reality of it. So in probably August we'll start to see the, the hustle and bustle in terms of your figures are right and mine are wrong and all of that will occur. 
And, and in a sense, I'd prefer that to be the case as, as a member of parliament. I don't want to spend the next seven or eight, well, the next six months uh, arguing about the election. We've got six months of this current parliament to go, and I think. Uh, major parties always make this mistake. And in a hung parliament, I think the, the Prime Minister and others should be well aware of this, that they've got six months to do a lot of hard work. You know, there's a lot of big issues before the parliament and things we need to do. So why waste time, uh, this is my view anyway, arguing about a parliament that you may or may not be in uh, when you've got one that's, uh, the, that's an active uh, agent at the moment? So my, my view is get on with the work uh, and, and if you do the work and do the job effectively and things start to happen in your electorate and the broader scene, uh, the broader electorates will look at you favourably or unfavourably depending on your work and what you've done. So that's how I've worked in the past and uh, that's how I intend to work for, the, for at least the next six months. Just one final question. The Labor MP Craig Thompson today said that he thinks it's possible that Labor would pre-select him again for the seat of Dobell. Do you think that would be appropriate? Well, it's none of my business. It's uh, it's, uh, it's their business. Uh, Is he a fit uh, person I don't live to in Dobell. Uh, sorry? Is he a fit person to be an MP? Well, he hasn't been convicted of anything yet. There's allegations. And, uh, you know, I've always, whether it be, uh, you know, the fellow Ashby or, in this case, Craig Thompson, everybody, irrespective of their political views, is entitled uh, to due process. And, uh, and Craig Thompson's no different to that. He, you know, I, I think it's appalling that we should try and judge people before the appropriate processes are judged. I have no legal training. Uh, he, he's an appropriate person uh, until he's found not to be. And uh, rumour and innu innuendo, whether it be true or not in the long run, and that'll be proven one way or the other, uh, you, you can't just suddenly evict people uh, on, the, on the basis of, uh, of those sorts of issues. The, the courts are there to do that. I'm not. Uh, and, uh, and neither is anybody else in this building. Tony Windsor, I'm sure we'll talk to you again in this election year. Thank you very much. OK, thanks, Lee.